Let's peruse the essentials of cool A brief study of the things so instrumental to do That make me feel flyer than lobbies of double Jews A disclaimer, just a rhema, no credentials from the school nah. Welcome world to the first broadcast of Chair, Armchair Sportsology Sportsology, so we're making up new words We yes. is Alright, so welcome to our first episode of Armchair Sportsology with Cliff and Corey Alright guys, um, we decided to have this sports show as a serious, not so serious sports show uh, we have a, you know, two guys who are sports enthusiasts, different walks of life. So we decided, you know, we we're, we're guys who like to have fun, like to make fun or make light of things. But we know sports really well, so we want to put this out there and you know see how you guys take it. Man, so the most important thing is be relaxed. The best sports conversations you ever have. You know, when you're watching sports, you've got a few beers in because that's when you're honesty. You're honest. Right. And there's been so many times where Cliff will text me, and I remember <laughs> back after the Rockets game six when. Damian Lillard hit that stupid ass shot, and I didn't say that bad word. Um, if Cliff ever shared the text messages I sent to him, I might uh, be taken by the government. I might be red flagged. There was words that were very inappropriate. Um, different leaders of groups may not appreciate what I said to him, but it was all in fun because you know, down we're sports lovers, sports enthusiasts, and we have fun and we get emotional. And that's that's what's great about sports. I mean, yeah, and not like I didn't tell him. Like, it's funny because we had a, a heated battle before, and I told him that the Rockets and the uh, Trailblazers weren't a good matchup for them. Well, you know, he's, he's a Houston guy. I'm, I'm from Houston, too, but I'm not a Houston Rockets fan. But I told him, like, man, it's not going to be pretty for y'all. But I didn't expect Lamarcus Aldridge just to go ape stuff out there, 44 points and, what, 48? <laughs> I didn't expect that. 48? But... I think I counted 297 in the <laughs> yeah. And I think he shot at 110%. He actually reached it. They say I strive for 110%. He was at 100% shooting percentage that game. <laughs> Clearly, I played against him in college. A um, little background on me, I actually, um, I played ball at Stephen F. Austin State University and uh, Prairie View and m University. And uh, I played against LaMarcus Aldridge and suffered the biggest ass whooping I've had in my life. I lost by 71 points. 71. What was the scouting report? <laughs> Oh, man, you're going to call my coach out. Uh, the scout report is actually a pretty bad one. Uh, his game strategy was to let Booby Gibson and A.J. Abrams to stop them and let the bigs, who happen to be one LaMarcus Aldridge and one P.J. Tucker, who currently starts for the Phoenix Suns, his strategy was to let those guys have it and to make uh, the guards work. Mm-hmm. And let's just say that that strategy didn't work. And I knew it wasn't going to work. We had a guy on my team. I don't want to call any names, but he's a uh, six foot ten African guy. So you would think like he can play. He didn't sniff the. He never played, never played. So scout team, he was Lam- Lamarcus. They had him out there. That dude for I want to say thirty points. That's probably like, with scout team. He never plays. I'm like so. Hmm. God never plays. Scores thirty on us. What do I think Lamarcus is gonna do? <laughs> and he did exactly what he thought. And we lost by seventy one points. So worst loss of my life. Did you at least, for appreciation, for something to remember, did you at least get a photo moment of you being dunked on? Mm, those photos do not exist, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been dunked on that much. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't choose. It was so many to go through. Hey, no. Hell no. I No. I, and I wasn't that guy who was afraid. Who, who was that guy uh, Gerald Green dunked on the other day? Tristan Thompson. Okay. Speaking and I was that Tristan Thompson type of guy. Like, I would go after it, but I knew who. Like, I mean, if it was a Gerald Green, I, I wouldn't go after that guy. But I, I would go after Duncan's, but yeah, I, I never got dunked on that much. Maybe like twice in my life. So Cliff had guts when he got demolished in the paint. Cojones. Well, that's what I think is fun about this is the two different perspectives. Is Cliff played college ball. He went over to Europe and played. And where did you play in Europe? I played in Germany, Switzerland, and Portugal. And so... Yeah, um, not top tier leagues, but you know, pretty competitive leagues, and so you know, I got to get my feet wet out there and get paid to play ball. Yeah, you know, what were the stories like? Because I imagine, and you know, even here, when I when I see a six foot ten, six foot eight black guy, I mean, obviously, you know, I don't want to say that you do any prejudice. I look at that guy and I go, "Hey, he must be a basketball player." What is the time that you just felt? And I imagine over there, it's even just you stick out more. Yeah. What was the time you just really felt out of place? Um, I would say Portugal the most. Um, when I showed up in Portugal, like, you think about beaches, you think about, like, you know, beautiful women, you think about Lisbon. And so the place I was at is actually called Villa Polka, which is in the north. So when I first got there, I actually went to Germany first. So I was in, like, Frankfurt. So I was like, you know, it's awesome there. And, like, you know, most Americans like that place because it's most like America. So the next day I fly to Portugal. 
So I go to, I, I go to Porto. I'm like, okay, it's a nice little city here. And so and then the coach was like, no, uh, Villa Polka, two hours away. I was like, okay, cool. Two hours. I went to sleep. You know, I was up all day in, in Frankfurt partying. So I wake up and look around. I was like, holy crap. The only thing missing is like Jed Clampett. Like it was like <laughs> in the country, in the north. Oh, it was the worst. You know, the song is written all over your face. Oh my God. They saw <laughs> when I got out that truck that I did not want to be there. Like I couldn't, I could not fake it. Like I tried my best to like put my smile. I met the team president and all that. I looked like I wanted to get the hell out of Dodge. And because I did, I, I couldn't hide it. I was like 22 years old. I couldn't hide it, man. So it, it was awkward, man. Like it was, it was a small village. There was about 2,000 people and two black dudes, and we were both on the basketball team. So, there's, there's a story. No lie. No gas. That, that's the situation. <laughs> so, in reality, when someone looked up and they, they saw the tall black guy and they said, you played basketball, the answer was always yes there. See. See, I felt really out of place like that, like, get me the heck out. You know, the other day I was traveling to Louisiana and I, I stopped in Beaumont. Okay. And I looked around and I go, get me out of here. I do not <laughs> want to be in this place. Um, so, there's close background, obviously, you know, there's, Quite a bit about the actual game of basketball he can play. Um, on my side, um, I usually don't get picked to play on pickup games. And one time I did get picked up. I didn't get invited back because I was able to actually double dribble on an inbound. I didn't think that was possible, <laughs> but I did it. And so there's a difference between us. Yeah. But I, I promise to do everything from a fan's perspective is I get so invested in games to where I might have broken a phone before. My liver may not be happy with me. There's just so much that, you know, I just put so much into enjoying the game. Everyone talk. I'm just thinking about after they lost. You, you really were upset. Like, you were really upset. <laughs> so I was, in a, I was at a bombshells. And I was at the bombshells in Webster. And we're sitting there. And majority of people are Rockets fans. And we're all sitting there. And, you know, Chandler Parsons had just made that layup. And I remember yeah. some with a group of, like, eight people. And we're sitting there screaming, yeah, you know, Blank you! What's up? Blank Portland! We got this! Number one! Gonna whoop the Spurs! We're screaming, talking, because we know we're going back game seven at home. Harden's finally started waking up. He didn't look as drunk as he looked in the first few games. And we're we're pumped. I think I threw I think I threw chips and salsa on the Hold person on. in front of me. You know I did hear someone say that he played bad because he was drunk? Because he went out to the club? I imagine in LA. Houston Homers, holy cow, man. Look, don't get me started. I'm not even gonna start that tangent, but I, I heard someone made a legitimate excuse. That he didn't play well because he went out to the club the day before, like one of the home games. I'm like, get the hell out of here. So I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I always see that. Just that's a little bit of a tangent, but I do always see that in the LA games. He always looks very sluggish, and I know he's from LA. That's his hometown, and I've always been curious is he going out? I don't know if he's really much of a drinker. I don't know if anybody knows that. I know I've seen him at the hookah bars at Leal, but I don't know if he's much of a drinker. But man, every time we go to LA, that fool looks drunk as can be. I mean, I think. I think he might be shooting Hennessy in the locker room or what's going on because... <laughs> Run a test. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he idolizes him. I don't know. But he will go out there and it looks like the room's spinning. He can't guard. His guarding is... His defense is never good. But when you have blurred vision and you see two Chris Pauls, then it becomes even worse. <laughs> it's like... That's like six people flopping at once. That's a, you know, that's a, good, that's a really good point. Like, uh, me playing, you know, pro ball, we, we used to get wasted sometimes before games. I actually got in trouble in Portugal for that. Uh, we played against Benfica, which is, no, Vitoria, which is the best team in the league. You had a guy from uh, Ole Miss, this best player's name was Eddie Tommy. And we lost by like 50. We got drilled. And I, I had like 20 and 10. I had a good game. But, I mean, we got like, yeah. We, we were putting them back the night before, and like they reported it. It was like in local news that we were drunk in the city. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be talking about this, but whatever. And so, it, you know, it did affect, you know, I guess some of our teammates' game a little bit. So, that, that's, a, that's a real valid thesis that, you know, you have there. So, most people, I just don't consider stuff like that. But there are variables that lead to certain, you know, player phenomena and all that stuff. So, that's a good point to bring up. Perhaps in some of those uh, European leagues and the lower leagues, the liquor company should actually look to sponsor. Because maybe, you know, they gave you a nice little check and just said, hey, I want you to run around this bottle of Jack Daniels in your hand until you get in trouble. That'd be a good sponsorship. It would be a good sponsorship. You can be out there real quick. Like, you get hard, get fouled hard in front of the side, take a few shots. And then it's just like, Jack Daniels. I think you'd get away with it. Like, the stuff I saw... Uh, in that Portuguese league when we were playing friendly games, I, I literally seen a full-on fight on the court. No technicals were given. I was like, what the heck is this? 
<laughs> no text. Like full punches thrown, everything. Like not like an NBA fight where it's like a where it's a, it's a shove, and then it's like the you know everybody's a thug all of a sudden. I mean, actual swinging. Nobody got a take. Nobody was thrown out. And then we just resumed the game. I was like, what? So I, I think, you know, taking shots of Jack, we would definitely fall in line with all that, man. But they should pursue that in the NBA. It'd be fun if you could actually go back to where you get full conflict. I mean, right now, the fights we talk about are always so silly. Yeah. It's maybe a swing, which if it's Dwight Howard, it might be a backhanded slap. But there's <laughs> never anything. I mean, the only person I see that actually tries to fight is Patrick Beverly, and he's smaller than me. Patrick Beverly, man. <laughs> yeah. But how fun would it be if they could actually, I mean, almost like, Hockey, where you get goons out there, and that's their job. Maybe even put masks on them. You got like a mystery 15th <laughs> man on the team that wears a mask and just comes out there. And like maybe, maybe LeBron's a little bit too hot. You got to keep checking. You just run out there, dude in a mask just comes and hits him with the chair. <laughs> that's for me. And they don't have to be heavy chairs. You know, we don't want anybody yeah, to get like seriously. The, the WWE foldable uh, breakaway chairs that they use. I think people would actually tune into Sixers versus New York oh, uh, yeah. Knicks if they knew that they could come out with a ladder. And do like a DDT on, yeah. uh, I would say, on a Knicks player, but I can't name one right now. Shay. <laughs> oh, my God. You see he's red with that layup. The guy go, he goes. Wait, was it a layup or was it a pass? Man, I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't either one. I don't think it's identifiable. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw it, but uh, Nikol- Nikol- was it Nikolai? I just call I think it. I don't know. Alex, Alexis Fed. Alexis, Alexis Fed. Alexis so, Fed. Uh, so it sounds like some vodka company, but. Uh, <laughs> He goes, uh, was it baseline? And he tries to, in his mind, he was trying to hit the defender in the corner. Well, no, his, his uh, offensive player in the corner. But it looks like a botched hook shot. And this thing, the, the trajectory on the ball, like, you can't even discern if it's a pass or not. It just goes straight up. And, like, the goal is 10 feet high. It goes, like, 10 feet above the goal and just goes straight out of bounds. Have you ever been sitting in the upper bowls and they do the T-shirt toss and you go, I'm never getting a T-shirt oh, up in the upper that, bowls? That'd be every time. They should be able to hit you in the upper bowls because Fed tossed the basketball to the upper bowls. And I didn't even think that was possible. Yeah. Like, you know, I've done that in ping pong. I've messed up a hit to where it goes that high in ping pong. But how do you do that in basketball is beyond me. Like, he should be the one taking the full court shots at the end of the game. He has the distance. It, it, it takes skill to be that bad. <laughs> that was bad. He had a, he had a mess up earlier this year, too. Like, he, he's not – yeah, I thought he was pretty good, too, man. Tall guard. But, yeah, he, he's, he, he might be drinking some of that vodka before the game. <laughs> that, might be, that has to be something up with that dude, man. Jack Daniels got another one for <laughs> Alexi Shred. <laughs> Alexi Shred. You got the long hair, you know. You, you, like, ladies might like him, right? Russian ladies. He ain't my cup of tea, but. Uh, <laughs> you know. Corey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about your, your Chandler Parsons man crush? The thing about me and Chandler Parsons is my signed gear from him is in my closet. I won't be looking at it anymore. I don't want to act like a hurt ex girlfriend, but I have a very sad topic. I don't want to speak about it, and I hope it gets fat. <laughs> Chandler has definitely abused this young man. But, all right, so this time we want to go to a segment called Right Now. Hashtag Right Now. Uh, shout out to uh, member Spike uh, Lundenberg, Lundberg, who's actually an Astro Scout. And so we want to talk about some of the topics that are going on right now. So just rapid response things. So we open floor. Let's talk about the Spurs, man. Two weeks ago, you know, you sit there and you believe that someday the Spurs are going to stop being good. And I just can't stand them so much that over, how long has Duncan been in the year? Is it 18 seasons? Um, yeah, 18, 97. Yeah. 90, I mean, I know I was like seven years old when he came into the league. <laughs> and all I've ever known is the Spurs being in the conversation. Yeah. And that's just not fair. Teams work for that four-year window. And here come the Spurs for 16, 18, I don't even know. And they're still... One of the best teams in the league. And this year it finally looked like it. It finally looked like they were slipping. They might. Maybe they can just fall to that ninth seed. Maybe to mediocrity. <laughs> but no. Here they come the last few games. Tony Parker, he's quit drinking before games or something because he looked horrible. He looked like Alexi Shed. And here he goes going 24 points, 10 assists, everything. And they're winning. They're blowing out teams. They just blew out the Bulls today. Yeah. They're back in the conversation. You don't want to play them in the first round. That's what they do, man. Like, um... I'm more of a, like a moxie guy, so I look at things from the perspective of I know, I guess, how the game is played, and I see the teams that stay true to that. And no matter what their record says, when it's time for it to matter, they're going to play the, the correct type of ball. Now, I'm a Lakers fan. Everybody knows this. But I respect the hell out of Coach Pop. Coach Pop, he's going to run his system. He's going to have a bench full of guys. He has 10 guys deep. 
And he'll, on, on occasion, sit his starters out and still beat guys, or at least compete to, to let those. And to me, it's like, I guess, you know, NBA fans hate it, the fact that, you know, he sits his stars sometimes. But, like, I mean, I look at it like this. You need to put butts in seats or win championships. That's not the coach's job to worry about the fanfare and all that. It's his job is to put the best product on the floor that's going to do for him. So sometimes he'll the rest of his starters, you know, for weeks ahead for them to be healthy. You do that, man. So I respect Pop the hell out of him, you know, for doing that because he, he understands the vigorous, you know, toils for a whole season. Like, he, he doesn't look at it from game to game, situation to situation, moment to moment. He he, he sees, like, the he has a long game to him. So I, I like I respect that, and that's why I never count the Spurs out until I can see it. I don't see it. So when Duncan is, like, you know, arguably the fourth best player and you play at such a high level, man, that system is effective, man. And so, you know, I don't see why people are writing the Spurs off. I, I, I couldn't see it. What's so bad about the Spurs is Duncan's not going to retire soon. I mean, you would think he would. He's going to be 45 years old, and then they're going to look at the advanced stats, and maybe he's only playing six games or six <laughs> minutes a game and still going to say he's putting up 18 and 10 like he's done his whole damn career. He's never going to go away. And how Pop has done that, you can't do anything but respect him. Yeah. Like, as much as you hate them, and I don't wish ill on them, but, man, can they get stuck in an elevator for a season? <laughs> that would be pretty epic, actually, if you got stuck in an elevator for a for season. For a season, yeah, that might be... <laughs> A uh, reality show. <laughs> on the <a>, elevator cam. <laughs> Ginobili looks like somebody that could like catch cockroaches and maybe <laughs> the animals in the vents. He could catch one and maybe cook them. He'd be like, "It's okay, friends. I can do this." <laughs> but I think the first to go be uh, Dor- uh, Boris Diaw. Oh, uh, there he uh, needs how food. Fat he, is. <laughs> he, needs uh, food. he looks like Blippy from uh, was it Popeye? Wimpy, <laughs> the guy who could go right into burgers. <laughs> That's a fan, dude. Yeah, yeah. He would go first, but that's because you can't trust Tony Parker. Tony Parker would take him out just to feed the others. He would. He knew. He seems like somebody that could get that done. Wouldn't be a fellow Frenchman. You think he turned his back on a fellow Frenchman? Okay, think about the French in the history. They don't win battles. All they do is win. <laughs> so many times in the history, they probably had to turn towards turning on their own. In the words of two, the two chains, true. <laughs> words of the bullet, Napoleon uh, Bonaparte. So you look at it, so right now we have the Spurs in the seventh seed. Okay. Oklahoma City in the eighth seed. They're going to get Kevin Durant back. Do you want to be a first or second seed in the Western Conference? That would be absolutely not. That would be mean, absolutely not. It's, it's insane that the Western Conference is like the Royal Rumble in the WWF. I mean, they're going to go in there. And you're sitting in the east. You got Cleveland, Atlanta. Do you consider anybody else a challenge over there? Bulls, maybe. I mean, Bulls play defense, so defense is going to get you in games. Maybe the Bulls. Other than that, I mean, I don't even think Atlanta's going to do well. So, other than that, you're right. I mean, Toronto, I mean, they're, they're good. They have no bigs. Uh, who else is even worth mentioning? The, the Bucks are good. I look at the Bucks are good. But they haven't been as good since the trade deadline. Really? I, I have seen a little bit of a drop-off, and I'm not going to say that I got Bucks League pass because I'd be lying because <laughs> nobody has Bucks League pass. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking the Milwaukee residents have Bucks Like, no, nah, I'll just wait to look at the uh, ESPN bottom line score <laughs> and see how we did. But I, I want to say there's been a little bit of a drop-off because what they do, they traded Brandon Knight, who they bring in. They brought in um, uh, MCW. MCW. They brought in MCW, and I want to say, though, that, that front line is young and tall. Their point guard is 6'7". They are 6'7 and up. They actually, we could take any of their players and put them as center on the Rockets right now when, instead of Joe Dorsey. True story. The, the two guard is what? Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's 6'10". Did you really just pronounce that? Because I play the video game. I like that. I, like, <laughs> I never, I, you know what I would say? The Greek, Greek Freak. Freak. Yeah. Greek Freak. That's where everybody go. Yeah, I like Giannis, man. He's, he about, he's about 6'11", actually. He plays a two. Two and three. Like So, yeah, that, they have good chemistry for the, the future, but I don't, I don't see this. Going I right can't now. see them competing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the Heat with Bosch going out, I really thought with that starting lineup, they could at least be a threat maybe yeah. in the first round because you were talking about. Oh, you okay, man? Um, Miller Light. It's <laughs> <laughs> good for the podcast. Um, I thought with that starting lineup of Drogic, mm-hmm. Wade, their small forward would have been Dane, and then you go to Bosch. And then center would be Whiteside. Hassan Whiteside, who how the heck that guy came from nowhere to be the craziest force in the NBA. That dude ranking on t- NBA two K was like a forty nine. Like so, if you, if you don't play video games, forty nine that's like the equivalent of like uh, the country of Guam. Nobody cares about Guam. Like we, we're if, ranking superpowers. If you stuck me in NBA two K, I'd have a thirty six. Yeah, like, I got, I got <laughs> so he's twelve. <laughs> I was actually on the video game. I was on a uh, March Madness. I was on a few of them, but Not the big first one. No, no, 
the first game I was on, March Madness, I think my ranking was like a 61. So so I was a 61, and I'm nobody. <laughs> so I'm white side, like a 47. And so he is tearing the freaking NBA up right now. Like he's getting freaking, what, like 20 some odd rebounds game after game now? It's like, like who? Can you, you think of a guy who's turned it on like that? Like, that's crazy. I, I don't understand how somebody can be a nobody and bounce around, <laughs> bounce around the D-League. I mean, he, I think he got cut by six D-League teams. I think Memphis himself cut him four times, and then he was in the Houston D-League. And Daryl Moore, that's one thing he's usually good at is finding those hidden gems. Yeah. You know, you got Patrick Beverly was playing in Russia, was a nobody. Yeah. And he comes in and gets second team all defense. He finds those guys. But like he, he jumps around. He plays in China, India, the moon, all, <laughs> these, all these random leagues. He comes back and... He's like the greatest defensive rebounding player I've ever seen. That's, that, like, I can't even compare him. Like, maybe Gerald Green is close to like a well-traveled guy who's a fixture now in the NBA. But, but even he had an upside. Like, Gerald Green hit like 44 points his rookie year. Whiteside's <laughs> giving like nothing. Like, he maybe got three minutes in like in a game. Like, he you know, wasn't like, even good in college. Yeah, where did he, he go? I can't even tell you. But he was a second-round pick. Yeah. And sometimes that happens with bigs because y'all, because the bigs will grow and will be so awkward in college yeah. and they haven't grown into the body. You know, DeAndre Jordan was a second round pick. Oh, Marcus man. Saul was a what second a round pick. What a win with DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, Houston, if I'm going to tell you anything that you've ever done wrong as a hardcore fan, I picked a guy named Joey Dorsey in front of DeAndre Jordan. Oof. Joey Dorsey. He's a cool guy. But how the heck did he go in front of He's him? He's like six foot four. I think I think what they did was they wanted another uh, Chuck Hayes incarnate, and so they went for oh, a your young. favorite player. Oh man, Chuck! Chuck, if you watch, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not a fan of you <laughs> at all. <laughs> but you know, I think that's, that's what they were trying to go for. Like, I mean, because Dorsey had a pretty good college career. At, uh, He's like the Memphis, Memphis. Great, yeah, yeah. So you know, he did what he could with his with his frame, but I knew he would be horrible as a pro. But you know, that wouldn't be the first time Houston did that. Uh, you know, we we can go into the Rashard Lewis discussion. Look, Turkan Mirsad, Eric, Michael that was, Dickerson. That was pre Maury. I'm not going to talk about. Bryce Drew. Them guys even played beyond like. Oh, yeah, we, had, four years. we had three first round picks that year. Yeah. Didn't we? <laughs> sorry, I was like, I'm sorry, you're a little Rashad Lewis me. only turned into like a, a freaking all star. <laughs> Michael. Well, Michael Dickerson wasn't a bad pick. But they got Turkan. I'll never forget that. Turkan Mirsad. Turkan Mirsad. I don't think he went back to Turkey and was good. I don't think he was ever good. I don't, think he can, I don't think he's good cooking turkey on Thanksgiving. Like, he is terrible. I do think there is a rule that you have to go to when drafting players that if their name doesn't sound like they could be good, they're not <laughs> going to be good. Like, name, I mean, there's been a few Europeans, but even the Europeans that make it, they don't have Turkan. That's a name. good point. This guy named Pavel Ploklozin. He played, no, Pavel Ploklozin. He played for the Mavericks, like, in 2004, 2005. He was seven foot five. He was mm-hmm. awful. You can't have yeah. if you have a bad name, you end up being yeah. fed. Yeah. You have to have a name that works. And if you're a European and your name right now is Taniki Metakameka, you need to change your name to Tagasol. <laughs> it needs to be able to roll off the tongue. And I really hope, because maybe the Greek freak can change that. But he's gonna legally change his name to the Greek freak because we can't say Antipakanumbo. We can't. Cliff can say it because he probably played in Greece. But that's unfair. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so if your good name sucks, then you're gonna suck too. That's just that's the way it goes. You need to Americanize your name, and then you, you will have success. You know somebody who didn't know that fool Rudy uh, Fernandez. He played for Spain. He played with Ricky Rubio. I thought he was gonna be good, man. You remember him? Oh, and he did have a smooth rolling name. That was so I'm saying. He had the down. look. I think he just man, he sucked, man. But when he plays FIBA ball, he's great. Man, God. <laughs> He plays FIBA ball. He's good. He comes over the NBA. I think he plays for FC Barcelona now, I think. Uh, Wasn't he on Portland? Yeah, he played for Portland. He played for the Nuggets. He was, I mean, he was he was okay, but he just never really just stuck. I'm sorry. I just went on a tangent. But, you know, it's... Well, we yeah. were talking about Hassan Whiteside, so... Yeah. Uh, kind of jump. But that is kind of tangent. But Hassan Whiteside, that, that starting five in the East with Hassan Whiteside, I thought it could have been something they could have challenged, but... I, when I really look at the East, I see that you have it's going to be Atlanta, Cleveland in the conference finals. Mm. And if I'm looking at who am I going to trust in the last seconds, uh, Teague or LeBron, I'm going to have to say that Cleveland's going to walk away with East. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I know that the vulnerability for Cleveland could be interior. Now, Atlanta, 
some I, I've kind of looked at them and kind of looked why they're successful. It's because, I mean, hell, let's look at it. Al Horford's finally healthy for a whole year. I played him against him in college. Uh, we played Florida. Got our ass kicked again. Uh, <laughs> not as bad as the Marcus game, but um, actually, again, with um, Al Horford being out so much, him actually uh, playing now. And so, <laughs> why you look like that, man? <laughs> he threw me out. But like I was saying, I think with uh, Al Horford being actually healthy, that gives the Hawks an opportunity to compete where they were deficient at the um, in the front court. So now they have him and Millsap. You know, they're a little undersized. They have a strong front court to compete. Whereas later, you know, earlier years, they were just, it was a strong guard play that got them to where they got. So that's what I got with that. So let's go into now our picks for the East and West. So two picks from the East, two picks from the West. What you got for me, Corey? For the East, I see no reason. Well, you know, the undersized front court of Atlanta, I think they would get demolished in the West. But in the East, they can get away with that. There's no competition. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to Atlanta and Cleveland. There's just no other teams of any strength that can stop either of them. Now in the West, it is just terrible. There's people hitting each other with chairs. It's just, it's going to be one of the greatest playoff series from 8-1 to one we've ever seen. But I do see coming out, I think with Dwight Howard, if he can come back, accept a DeAndre Jordan role that it will be Houston versus Golden State in the conference finals. Okay, Houston versus Golden State. And so I actually am uh, going to go a little opposite on that. So my Houston, my, uh, Houston, my Western Conference picks, I'm going to have number one. I'm going to have Golden State. I think uh, I don't love the way they play, but they, they're damn good at what they do. Secondly, I'm going to go, this is going to be extreme sleeper. It's going to be a head scratch. Some of you are going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks as my second pick, my dark horse pick for the Western Conference Finals. I think that uh, as bad as they've been playing, they can't stay that bad with the team they have. I think they're fairly deep. I think uh, if Dirk is truly as good as advertised, I think um, that nucleus will match together pretty well. Adding Amari Stoudemire was a definitely good addition, a boost in their front court. So that's what I'm thinking as far as Western is concerned. Eastern, of course, Cleveland. I mean, who's going to beat them in a the seven-game series um, up into the conference finals at least? Nobody. That's who. Um, and so my second pick is actually going to be – Chicago Bulls. I think Tibbs has those guys. It's always playing good defense. Defense, um, they say defense wins championships, and it does to a degree, but you still have to have offense as well. He hasn't found that yet. He hasn't found that yet. <laughs> you know, we know Tibbs going to run those guys to the ground. You know, guys don't love playing for Tibbs, but, I mean, hell, you can't argue the results. So, And Jimmy Butler's coming on strong as of late. So my pick, my second pick is going to be the Chicago Bulls. So that's uh, my duel for the East and West and Shore. I find it just a little bit of a conflict of interest because if Dallas loses in the first round, your Lakers could be getting rondo. And I can definitely live with that scenario. <laughs> so how so wrong you win. Uh, exactly. When I win, when I'm wrong, I'm right. When I'm right, I'm right. There we go. That's how it goes. Nah, that's how it is. Okay. <laughs> so last segment is going to be the shout-out section. So, uh, Corey? You got um. Any? My shout-outs are nice and brief. Uh, my friends Michael Pedraza and Tim Pedraza, they're brothers. Thank you for sending me all those pictures of men in neon-colored short shorts while I was doing this. They were much enjoyed. More is when the beer got going after a few of them. But thank you for that, and those are my shout-outs. Okay. Interesting set of shout-outs. Um, so my shout-outs are a lot less um, short-short related. Um, I want to give a shout out to my hoop jargon members out there doing doing out there uh, doing great things out there putting in the work. Uh, Ernest, our COO, Noise Control, Reese, Charlene, our event planner, Tacho, Coach Tacho at Prairie View and uh, Volleyball. Congratulations, Coach Toya Wilson out there in Baylor, Second Bears. You guys just won conference. Um, who else I got a shout out to? Uh, the Slap. Can't forget about the Slap. Took the show by storm. Mariana, Teresa, Holly Heat. AKA Thirst Trap, all my good jargonites out there, man. I love y'all, appreciate y'all. And uh, also Sammy Veal doing good things with real one on one and, and related things. So, and uh, lastly, I want to uh, acknowledge two members uh, doing an epic meme battle going on with uh, Zach Zargoza and um, Chris Hernandez. I don't know what happened, I don't know what prompted this. They just started this meme battle talking about one is uglier than the next two Hispanic guys. And hey, whoa! Okay. Don't use that term. Okay. But do not say that. That is not. Politically correct. We call Hispanics Spurs fans. Okay. What was I thinking? Two Spurs fans who happen to be Rockets fans. Culturally confused. Two culturally confused Rockets fans. Spurs fans. <laughs> yeah, there we go. 
They like their tacos. They just going at it. They, they have some pretty funny memes. So I'm gonna see if I can get those memes uploaded on there because. I don't like to, like, I guess, gas stuff up. It, it, it's pretty funny. Like, I don't know where it came from. It, like, it's just so left field. So, you can check that out. And so, um, I'll try to post that on the website as well. So, make sure make sure you check out www.hoopjargon.com, facebook.com forward slash hoopjargon, Instagram, same name, Twitter, same name. We're going out there. We're going to take over the world, man. So, this is uh, podcast one of many. So. You can check me out on Hoop Jargon. It is the bathroom blog. I will be putting up a new blog this week. It is my ode to be a trade asset. Yeah, whatever that is. All right, so <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Until next time, we're out. Taylor Holmes to Africa slum status I am American mentally with Japanese tendencies Parisian sensibility, so stay out the vicinity uh.